is an unspoiled network podcast. Hey, everybody. It has been a while since I updated this feed. I hope that you are all excited to see it pop up on your phones. Um, I'm sorry for the lateness. You probably all know that LeakyCom was over a month ago at this point, but it did take them quite a while to get me the sound file. And then by the time they did, I had been wrapped up in commissions for Spoil Me, which, if you guys aren't familiar, is the new commission thing that I'm doing. And if you're interested in finding out more about that, you can go to unspoiledpodcast.com slash shop and take a look at the options for commissions. And you can also find the feed for Spoil Me on iTunes. Um, all of the episodes that I have done for commissions are on there, including So You Want to Be a Wizard, Fire and Hemlock, Iron Druid. There's a lot of series. And also for television, I've started covering Veronica Mars. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested in checking those out, those are all solo shows. And they have been taking up a ton of time, so I fell way behind, and I am so sorry for that. But hopefully you guys will enjoy this episode, and um, if you haven't already watched the video uh, that we posted on Facebook a while back. And also, I wanted to apologize for the sound quality. It's a live show. Most of you will probably be familiar with what that's like, but it can be a little bit off at times. And I also wanted to remind everybody to check out Box, our sponsor. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to say a lot about them lately because without having a feed on iTunes, it's hard to get the word out. But Akio Box is the best. Um, they were at LeakyCon and they were so kind and really generous with their time and just really sweet. They actually gave Rashawn a constant vigilance flask. Um, it was the last one that they had. And I emailed asking them if they had one and I could buy it from them. And they insisted on just giving it to her, which was really nice. And their stuff is just so great. We just did another um, September box live unboxing, which you can find on our Crowdcast. Um, and I will be doing another one for October if you're interested in seeing what comes in the boxes. But check out AkioBox.com and use code UNSPOILED for 10% off your first three boxes. All the stuff that you get is like really original, unusual Harry Potter merchandise that you really can't find anywhere else. And nobody's going to have the same thing as you. I'm very confident of that. So if you'd like to see some of what Rashawn got, I will be posting the link to the Crowdcast in the show notes for this episode. And um, again, code unspoiled for 10% off your first three. So thank you again, everybody, for your patience. I hope that those of you who um, haven't become patrons haven't missed us too much, but we do have other shows that you can check out. Dresden Files is going strong, and I just posted the first episode of uh, Doctor Who yesterday um, by the time this goes up. So it will be live on iTunes hopefully within a week, but you can find it on Spreaker. And uh, if you are a patron, you already have it because it's on your feed on Patreon. So, all right, I think that's everything. I just wanted to give up, um, give some shout outs and make some announcements because a lot has been happening. And now on with the show. All right, everybody, we're going to get started. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm Natasha. I'm Rashawn. And how many people here, First Order of Business, have listened to the Unspoiled podcast? Hey, there's some people. I don't know what I was expecting, but I kind of expected like crickets for a minute there, and then one person to shyly put their hand up. Um, so those of you who haven't listened to it, the premise behind the show is that one person has covered a piece of material, either a book, a TV show, or a movie, and the other person has not seen or read it before. Rashawn, my lovely co-host, uh, had not read the Harry Potter books, and when I met her, she had vowed in all caps on Facebook for her whole feed to see that she would never read them. Never. And... <laughs> Hello. Guess what? <laughs> I kind of bullied her into it a little bit, but little you know, bit. I think it I think it worked out. Yeah. So this is our first panel ever. Forgive us, we have nerves. Um <laughs> and thank you very much. And um the second order of business, a uh, warning solemnly swear quite frequently <laughs> so we got permission i emailed the staff at leaky con and was like 
do you all allow, is that? And they were like, well, if you put a warning, let people know. And I was like, yeah, because we're going to be talking about Cursed Child. And the email back I got was, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, you're going to want to be able to. I was like, yeah, I haven't read it yet. That's scary. Okay. <laughs> um, and they were right. So we're going to definitely <laughs> swear some. So just wanted to be upfront about that. Um, okay, next call. How many people have seen the play staged? All right, so a spattering, not a ton. Um, we have not seen it. We have heard via the grapevine that seeing it helps. Mm -hmm. oh, I see, don't I believe, believe she you. Saw the truth right there. See, she was like, mm, yeah, mm. <laughs> because there's an extent to which. You know, I understand performances can be great, effects can be great, but that doesn't change the content. And that's what we had a problem with. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I finished reading a couple days ago. Sean was reading last night. I finished it last night, and I was outraged. <laughs> <laughs> if there had been more time, I would have written angry letters. <laughs> Um, who do I hold responsible oh my God, for this? I was so mad. <laughs> I wrote it like on Facebook. I was like, "Who okayed this?" <laughs> so there's a lot of, um, you know, there was a because the podcast group that we have has a lot of very passionate fans, and uh, it was interesting because there are some people who can be very puritanical about Harry Potter content, who were still defending this and you know basically saying J.K. Rowling said this is canon, so it's canon. End of story. And I just, hashtag, not my canon. I can't. Like, it just directly contradicts so many things yeah. that I can't. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to just, over, we're not going to do a blow-by-blow blow of the plot. Everybody's read it. Am I right? If you're worried about spoilers and you're here, I don't know what to tell you. That's a bad idea. <laughs> so what was what was your main takeaway after you finished reading it? My main takeaway is that if I had just put it down <coughs> by like page twenty seven, I would have been very happy with it. Yeah, I think that's um, about where I was because at. it starts off really well and all this potential, and then it just goes to sh <laughs> we can swear we can do it it Go just ahead. goes to shit guys it, 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 and it <laughs> happened super fast too like yeah I was reading it and I was like I'm meeting the new characters and I'm like oh this is gonna be something and then it's like I, I blinked and it was just a garbage in my hands and I didn't even know how it happened and then I had to <laughs> muddle through it because I had to finish it and I don't know when's the last time you hate read something but it is <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, so I just, like, we were in the hotel room, and, um, you know, she's playing on her phone and getting ready for stuff, and I'm just making... <clears throat> it was amazing. What I'm the I'm sitting next to her, this? and all of a sudden... Oh, just, get out of here. I'm just, like, yelling <laughs> randomly. <laughs> um, so, I think for me, the main issue is the fact that it is a time travel story, right? There, It's hard to get invested in plot points and you know people having their souls sucked out which should be a very mm -hmm. gravitational is that the word i want i don't think so a moment with gravitas okay okay um <laughs> it should be something that you like the stakes are just oh my god i'm watching this happen and the way it's written in the script is it's horrifying and i'm like yeah but i know i turn the page and that's done and fixed yep and yep. that's exactly what happens mm -hmm. so how can you get invested when you know that they can just undo everything? And that's part of why J.K. Rowling got rid of all the time turners. Was she knew that was a problem, and she decided to kind of fix the problem the best way she could. And I thought that was a really good call. And bringing it back, and not only having one... Listen. <laughs> <laughs> when he is like... Guess what I have in here? <laughs> I could have threw this fucking Kindle across the room. I was so irritated. <laughs> I was so mad. And uh. the and the first one too that they have has like that five minute uh -huh. limit right, too, right. which is such a weird, arbitrary thing that like, well, this we can't let them go too far and stay in the past too long. So we're gonna instill this limit and and 
claim that it's because this time turner is like a prototype. Right, yeah. Which, I guess. <laughs> like, um, so, yeah, there's, just, there's so many things, like, <laughs> the intro that I had planned here was, welcome to our panel called Polyjuice Takes a Month to Brew. <laughs> because these are the little details that, w- like, I really want to know, did they have anybody test read this? Oh. Who's in the clearly, fandom? Clearly not. I wouldn't think, no. right? Because anybody would stop and be like, hold on, wait. Because we are nitpickers. That's, we love this fandom, right? And that's the thing. We get invested in little details. And those details are there to keep things right. from being too easy. Mm-hmm. So you don't put that kind of effort and time in building such an intricate, um, colorful, full world just to crap all over it, mm-hmm. you know. It it's, it feels kind of like a slap in the face. And it's disrespectful. A little bit of a... Yeah, it's, it's disrespectful. <laughs> um, I, will, I want to talk about something that I really liked, though. And There's I know you did. something you really liked? Scorpius. Oh, right, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was, like, the only good thing from the book. I Scorpius is a little gem. Yeah. Like, he's just a little gem, and I love him. <laughs> um, but... I really had hoped that they were going to have him and Albus be a couple, and they didn't mm. do that, which I felt like was sort of... Cop out. It was... I don't, yeah, is it mm. cop out? Is that the word I want? I feel like it's fair. Yeah, let's go, right, yeah. let's go with that. I mean, I thought for sure that that was going to happen by the end of the story, mm-hmm. right? And then for it not, I was just like, oh, well, you just punked out. <laughs> you could have, you know, you could have had some stones and just <laughs> made, said the thing, but... You know. Yeah, I um, I think that why I like Scorpio so much is because of what you said. The beginning is so good. Mm-hmm. It opens up with Harry and his son that he has this weird relationship with that only gets worse after the first four years. And there's this beautiful, like, flash forward of seeing him get sorted and seeing him get picked on and seeing him try and defend himself and not know what he's even defending himself against. Like, just who my dad is? What's that? And you feel for him. Like, I feel like we've talked about in our show mm-hmm. about what horrible pressure it would be to be Harry's kid coming right, to Hogwarts. Right. Like, that's a real thing. But I had hoped that the whole play would be centered around him starting to understand his father better. And instead, it becomes this abrupt switch where it's, I'm going to fix my father's mistake and show everybody mm-hmm. that I'm better than him. Yeah, it's this weird competition. That yeah. Um, and he goes back in time to the first task when Harry is super unpopular and everybody hates him because they think that he entered... opportunity this is, right? Yeah. Like, he could have... Albus could have seen his father, who he thinks is just has always just been the golden boy and has never, you know, done anything wrong and has always had fans. He could have seen his dad getting booed. You know, what a moment that would have been. Mm-hmm. It would have, I think, completely changed his perception of his father. Um, but it, but instead, he sees, you know, him getting applauded, and mm-hmm. you know, it just reinforces all the things he already believes about his father. It's just a, such yeah. A there's like moment. kind of a throwaway. Like the, it's noticeable that the applause for Harry is less than it is for Cedric, but I'm that's gonna, not enough. Yeah, you know, like we mm. need. I wanted him to realize because it's not. It's finally this like conversation in the last pages of the book that Harry's like, "Oh, James is nothing like me. He mm. has everything comes easily to him. That's not how it was for me." Right. We shouldn't have you guys just talking and saying that. He should have seen that. Mm-hmm. You were given a chance to go and see one of the most traumatic periods of your father's life and instead you just hear Ludo Bagman <laughs> with his like what, what does he say? What is happening? <laughs> he's something about like uh, luscious like he's making all these He weird... calls Cedric delicious. I remember mm. that. Yeah, that's Delicious right. diggory because that's not something you're ever going to forget. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah, I um, I just once we got into that first task moment and I and they don't have him really seeing how things were happening for Harry at that point and how terrified Harry is I realized oh this isn't going to be mm-hmm. what I was hoping it was going to be so on that note let's talk about Delphi <sighs> <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> I'm like trying to decide where to start with this. Yeah. So it, the explanation in the book is that Delphi is the daughter of Voldemort by Bellatrix and that she is coming back to like, she's going back in time to help her father gain power. Mm-hmm. My headcanon is that she's totally not Voldemort's daughter at all and just has delusions of grandeur. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I kind of want to believe that one. <laughs> but I don't, like, there's no real evidence presented, right, that we know of mm-hmm. to support her claim. Does anybody out there know? Is there anything, like, has J.K. Rowling come out and said, no, that's definitely Voldemort's daughter? All right, cool. I'm just going to keep that then, right here. <laughs> that's She's just really wants to believe that. And you know what? I'm not even going to take that away from her. That's how generous I am. <laughs> but, <laughs> so she has, uh, she winds up, like, manipulating Albus into trusting her and initially was going to come with them when they go back in time the first time Mm -hmm. and they decide that she doesn't need to come conveniently so she has to like put her plans off a little bit more um did you were like alarm bells going off for you when you first met delphi or was that just me no i I didn't have any alarm bells because i just did not care (laughs) (laughs) interesting Um. perspective expand on that um I bought the line that she was um, related to Cedric and, you know, with her helping Amos around. And I thought that it was, I thought her wanting them to save Cedric seemed weird. Like, it, like her reasoning just didn't make a lot of sense to me. Okay. Um, but I did not think that she was going to turn out to be, clearly I didn't think it was going to be Voldemort's daughter because... I mean, he doesn't have a nose. What else doesn't he have? <laughs> I, I really did not say it. it. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, God. I'm just like, I'm Alan Rickman and Dogma just won't go. So, okay, yeah. I think because it's just the idea that Voldemort would be intimate with anybody. Right, right. Bellatrix notwithstanding. Mm-hmm. She's the closest to him out of anyone. Right. And she's not super close to him. I just don't see it. Yes. Oh, yeah. I see this. Yep. You know what? Um, sorry. In the... <laughs> I think... The... <laughs> <laughs> the theory here is that in bed, Voldemort would be the submissive, and Bellatrix would be the dominant, which I 100% see, and I think I support this theory. Yeah. If that were to happen, which I would like to expunge that from my brain, I hate you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Oh. Spun wildly out of control. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I think I felt all the blood drain from my face. <laughs> the victim of like violation. Yeah, uh, that's such a crazy idea. But yes, a hundred percent, she would do that. <gasps> I like that so much better. That's going to be the thing now. Because that, yeah, like, she would be so obsessed with prolonging his line. Like, that, I mean, pure blood. he's like, even though he's not, would be, like, the goal, right? So, I hate you, too. Thank you. (laughs) I was wondering the same thing. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. And Draco has no reaction when the reveal about who Delphi is, right? Yeah, that's true. But she's kind of family, right? Yeah. So, yeah, this whole thing is just... There's just so many holes things that are wrong. Yeah, yeah, things that, like, you wouldn't... It just... Okay, I know that this is a small thing, but for me, it's a character thing, and that makes it a big thing. 
we have in the beginning them talking about, you know, what could be going on with Albus when he disappears. And they're discussing things with Minerva. And she's like, well, I mean, there was some boomslang skin and lacewing flies missing from the cabinets, but those aren't restricted items, so. <laughs> the last time those things went missing, a fucking Death Eater was masquerading as a teacher and killed a student. <laughs> How are you not concerned about this? I couldn't believe that. I read that, and I was like, I, rem- I was in the bathtub, and I did one of those, like, fumbles with my Kindle where you're, like, about to drop it on yourself, and I reread it, and I was like, she's just hand-waving yeah. this like yeah. it's no big deal. And don't get me started about the fact that that's the potion that they take, like, mm-hmm. a couple hours later mm-hmm. to break into the ministry, which it takes 30 days. Well, you know, she luckily Delphi had prepared. Yeah. Just, you know. And that's the, I had brought this up in the group also, that it takes 30 days. And somebody said, well, there could be time passing. But then they discuss making more yep. once yep. they're when thrown they're, back into the past to imitate Voldemort. Yeah. When they go into uh, Batilda's house. Mm-hmm. And he says. Just he does, bust into her he, house. Yeah, well, he, Women deserve some door. respect. She said there's no such thing as locked doors. Oh, right? Yeah. Um, but even in that scene, they specifically say she will have the ingredients. Right. right. Mm-hmm. They, they could have, I mean, if you're going to just blow that much smoke up my ass, you could do the line should be, I bet she has some, or she was known to store some, mm-hmm. some something. Yeah. But no, she's got the ingredients, and then we're going to be right back out in 10 minutes. Yep. Yeah. Nobody brought a cauldron. I guess we're just going to steal that from Matilda, <laughs> too. Just chill out in her living room with her fireplace. Like, how rude do you th- Like, th- she just comes home and she's like, Excuse me, there's seven people in here. And one of them is claiming, well, all of them are claiming to be from the future. Uh, Yeah, that's going to go really well. So, the second, all right, now let's discuss. Oh, the trolley (laughs) witch. So, (laughs) trolley witch. I love how I just like snort laugh every time you mention anything. (laughs) So, the trolley witch is so good at her job. That no one has ever escaped Hogwarts Express, ever, in like 140 years. She has a perfect years. record. Perfect record. Because no one has ever thought to just jump off the train, I guess. This is my question, is everybody, like, you have to jump, right? When you're right. trying to escape the train, that's the only option, I assume, is to I jump off. Now, and her hands, let us not forget. <laughs> Turn into spikes. Yeah. Which, because she's a T-1000. <laughs> <laughs> so, if your job is to keep the kids safe and not let them get off the Hogwarts Express, why the spikes? How about nets? How about <laughs> lassos? Her hands turn into lassos and retract. But That'd even be good. after all this amazing buildup of what she can do and how long she's been there and this transformation of her hands, they just get away. They just jump. And then, oh, these kids outsmarted me. And then later, later when the parents are, are questioning the trolley witch, she's got no answers. Yeah, she's just ranting. Yeah. She never says they jumped off. We were at this spot when it happened, so maybe you guys should check right here. It just it was just the dumbest thing. And I um I don't know why you would what? Why? I feel like maybe she's just never had to access the database where you take record of where oh kids God. jumped off because she's got a perfect record, so it's just syntax error. Doesn't she have a piece of candy that turns into a grenade? Uh, a pumpkin pasty, I believe Guys. it is. That, yes, that explodes Guys. like a grenade. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> I mean, I've heard that this moment on stage is actually, like, pretty incredible to watch, and this is the kind of thing that, while mm. I don't think this, like, watching this would excuse what's actually <laughs> happening, I do want to know what that looks like. I'm very curious, yeah. because you're watching a, a cute little old woman with a trolley throw grenades her hands turn into spikes and she becomes like very foreboding and her voice <laughs> deepens and i'm just like i so if anybody has you know some illegal footage uh <laughs> let me know i'm curious about it um so okay 
<laughs> before you distracted me with the trolley witch, I wanted to talk about the method by which they decide they're going to save Cedric. Because this is the part I have the biggest problem with. Okay, you go. If you're going to save Cedric, and don't get me wrong, would I love to go back and save Cedric? Uh-huh. Because I kind of, like, his death is just that moment in the books where you're like, yeah. Oh, we're doing this. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was just so unfair. And so I can't believe I'm getting emotional about Cedric Deary, but I really am right now. <laughs> it was so... Uh, thoughtless, just mm-hmm. oh yeah, mm-hmm. whatever. We don't need that one. Yep, the spare. Um, and so yeah, I've seen some people be like, "Well, who cares about bringing back Cedric?" No, don't you dare. <laughs> That's not the part I care. Like I'm mad about. But if you're gonna do it, it's so infuriating because it's so obvious that they're like, "Oh well, they're gonna start with the first task because they have to go back in time three times." Yep, yep. It's always got to be task. three. Yeah, it's always right. Yeah, because we have to have this. But who here would choose the first task if they were gonna try and save him? Are you gonna go and it's like Doctor Evil that you just do that and then you assume everything went to plan? What? <laughs> because the whole theory is that if you get him behind and on points. That he will just give up. Yeah. Right. Or that he won't get a head start in the maze, and so he won't win. And that's assuming a lot. Like, there's all kinds of things going on that he could still wind up getting ahead. Mm-hmm. I mean, Fleur and Crumb take each other out. Well, Crumb takes her out and then is taken out. So Cedric's the last one standing anyway, so it could very well have happened in either case. Why they just don't go right to the end. You gotta get up in there. No, why they don't just go <laughs> That's what <Steve> said. <laughs> why they don't just go right to the third task. That's I don't understand. I mean And the changes that occur because of their choice to do the first task mm-hmm. they I think it's that they um they disarm Cedric right. so he can't transform a stone. Mm-hmm. And this leads to, because Hermione's right there when they do it, which, guys, you, that's, if there's anybody you don't want standing next to you when you try and pull some shit, it's Hermione. Right, Are you right. kidding? And she decides that she doesn't trust the Bulgarians because of this. Yeah, because they're in those robes. And she won't go to the dance with Crumb, which, Ugh. when we jump back to present time, Ron is married to Padma. Because of reasons. Right. (laughs) Because their whole love affair is based on the jealousy he felt seeing her with Crumb at the ball. That's the foundation of that great romance. You take that away, you get nothing. That's what they're they're telling us. It's the worst. That is real harsh. <laughs> what did he do so bad at the ball? I mean, he he didn't really like blow it. That, I mean, he tried, and she was just so distracted and into Harry, which he thought like meant right. something. But nah, I take issue with that because I mean, I don't love Ron. He's a just a bundle of problems. But I don't feel like I feel like that's giving Hermione so little credit, too, to just be like, oh, there were these two choices. This one fucked up, so I guess that right. guy. Right. Like, right. Is that how that's going to play out? But, yeah, the, the, the whole idea that him being a dick to her and his jealousy and lashing out and implying mm-hmm. that, like, that's the, th- the irreplaceable ingredient to their relationship? I don't care for it. No. Yeah. Dislike Thunstone. And then <clears throat> Ron ends up with Padma. Um, I think the part is that he dances with Hermione and it was good. And then he dances with Padma and it was better. And now he's married to someone who I'm pretty sure we're supposed to think he doesn't really enjoy being with. Mm. She's kind of not pleasant the way that they describe her as his wife. Yeah, she's and a shrewish harpy. this kid 
who for no good reason is awful. <laughs> Why is his kid so terrible? Ron talks about how he'd like to like slap the smile off his yeah. face. He's talking about his own child. Yeah, I mean, I don't have kids. I'm sure parents do feel that way. Yeah, don't get me right. wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> we have a hand here. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just like the whole thing just falls apart so spectacularly mm-hmm. that you're essentially making Ron an entirely right. different person when you change this one instance. And who which, is Hermione in this? She's a head, she's a professor. She's a professor. And she's like really bitter. She's and, snappy. Yeah, like how does, so not having Ron as her partner, we get Hermione as Snape. Like that's the only thing keeping her from just being completely nuts. These shrewish it's, harpies, I'm telling oh, you. Oh, it's right. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that, if she just got some dick, I would, didn't want to say it. I did want to say it. <laughs> It'd but be fixed. That's basically what it's saying. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is just the worst. And like, there's this tension. You know, they have to have the moment where shrewish Hermione runs across. It, it like mm-hmm. battered Ron and there's still chemistry and whatnot between them and I'm like so what that wasn't there before and you just got it back after he got married is that like it just okay so moving on second task <laughs> um, the second task their goal again I do not comprehend there's this weird thing about humiliation he's gotta yeah. be humiliated cedric that's their theory right if even we, delphi comes on board with that too though i can't take anything she says <laughs> like i don't know what her game is in a lot of this you right. know okay um you know what But this is my question. So I understand humiliation being a horrible thing to have happen in high school, especially. But the goal is what? You humiliate him, and then he just gets so, like, downtrodden by everybody making fun of him that he fails the next task, too? Like this is this is where where I land with a lot of like I understand what you're saying, I don't disagree with you, but it feels so roundabout, you know. Like all you need to do is delay him again because the whole thing is to be behind on points, and I guess it's not the whole thing is because a lot of it is about just him like sort of caving mm-hmm. and giving up. Okay, so. Right. Yeah, okay, so it does work. Spoiler alert, it does in a really weird way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cedric gets humiliated so badly that he, that he becomes a Death Eater. Right, right. What is this incel bullshit? He's like, <laughs> oh, I got ruined at this one thing, and now I'm a bigot, racist, whatever, because of this completely unrelated other... Mm-hmm. What, like, again, we're sending these weird messages in this mm-hmm. story where it's this guy who's... It's so fucking so It is, <laughs> it is. And you can tell that this wasn't written by a woman, a lot of this. The, the writing from J.K. just has more nuance with things like this. And this was two dudes who seem to have a kind of surface-level understanding, if that... So there's the jealousy thing that they seem to think is a very valuable, mm-hmm. like ingredient and then the humiliation which is enough to make him a muggle killer yeah what <laughs> yes yeah yeah Yeah. 
Well, that's exactly it, right? It's such an easy, strange thing to to decide because they need this alternate universe right. where Voldemort won. And how could they possibly get that from the and so they have this bizarre overreaction in this direction from him that we have known a bit of Cedric and it doesn't sound anything like no. anything that we've ever learned about him from any of the earlier are, books. Like loyalty, right? Wouldn't you think? I would be not to say all Hufflepuffs are just gonna be good people, but <laughs> That's my fiance clearing his throat in the front in the Hufflepuff hat, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and that's a fault of the of the script. If they want us to believe that, they need to show us that. But they don't. They have this one instance, and then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I can't headcanon that. Like, it's just, they're asking too much. Exactly. Which is the same problem as the end, when Harry's like, oh, things didn't come easy to me. Well, fuck, dude, why didn't you just say that, like, five years ago to your poor son? (laughs) I'm sorry, there was a hand over here. Yep, yep. I agree, Dad, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the, like... <laughs> <laughs> Good job, honey. You wrote something. Um, yeah, I think that that's, like, a key problem with a lot of bad writing, because I cover, like... Unspoiled has about 28 different shows right now, podcasts covering all kinds of stuff. And whenever I run across that in particular, that's always what it is, is that they decide they have to have this plot point first, and then they figure out how to get there. And you mm-hmm. can tell. You can always tell that. You, yeah, you really can as a viewer. It's just so convoluted and contrived to get to this point, and people are acting out of character. <clears throat> Walking dead. <laughs> um, yes. Now, see, I don't feel like the characters are done well either. Like, I'm, I wanted to start this panel out by being like, here are the positive things. And I was shocked by the time I finished reading how, like, short that list was. Because the char- like, I was talking about Minerva. Harry decides that his son can't be friends with Scorpius. This Harry in this book. Who is this Harry? He's a... He's a Not t- my Harry either. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. he... And based on what? Bane. Look, we all know about Bane, mm-hmm. right? Like, he's not a friendly dude, and not that he's going to lie, but he's right. just, he doesn't care whether right. things work and out. And Harry has enough personal experience with him mm-hmm. to have been a better judge. And But he just takes his, his very vague warning and decides it's Scorpius and his son. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I see a dark cloud, and he's just, maybe oh, that's a person. You're the dark cloud, Harry. Oh. Harry's the dark cloud. I said it. I ain't scared of y'all. Wow. All right. Um, Yes. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's that was what came to mind for me also was just this is abusive. You're isolating your kid that you know doesn't have a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. And you're telling him that the one person that means the most to them in the world, they can't be around. And that is straight abusive. And also telling him, I kind of wish sometimes that you weren't my son. 
I mean, I understand heat of the moment kind of thing, but I just have a hard time believing that Harry would ever blurt that out, considering that what Albus seems to be facing is something that Harry later claims to identify and understand with, you know, like so much. How could he have such a hard time seeing that? Because Albus doesn't make a secret of it. When he's home, he he talks about how he doesn't like Hogwarts and doesn't like being there. So... It's just a bizarre sort of, like, disconnect to me. Mm-hmm. With Harry, like, he tends to be a, a compassionate person who, like, right. observes. The few times that we saw Harry not be compassionate in the books were when he was under great stress. Mm-hmm. Um, when he had just had about enough of Ron, because, you know, sometimes you've just had enough of Ron. <laughs> Ron fatigue. <laughs> it's a real thing. But it was never, like fundamental part of his character Mm -hmm. you know and to see him behave this way with his with his child and also the the elder one james who like alice is missing for a significant portion of this story his parents are in a frenzy and i don't know where james is or if he even cares like Mm -hmm. he we talked about this james exists in this story just to be the foil to alice just to be like the sibling that is better, more like that, or, you know, more popular, whatever. Mm-hmm. He's not actually a real character in the story at all. And it's just, such, again, a really strange choice in my mind. Like, you could have had some really interesting scenes between Albus and James, um, you know, uh, that make me think a little bit about Ron and some of the older Weasley boys, you know, because Ron was the youngest and felt very much like he never lived up and everything good had already been given to his older siblings. And I feel like that's something that Albus would have related to. But um, I guess Trolley Witch had to happen. (laughs) So we did that instead. Um, Yeah, I'm just... There are so many, like little moments in this that don't work and it's the kind of thing that if there were one or two even three I can forgive that when but there are so many on top of each other and the plot relies so heavily Mm -hmm. on some of the moments Mm -hmm. that it just really the fabric of it comes apart completely and I I know that I have kind of said this already but I should check into, like, how much the two men who wrote this actually are familiar with Harry Potter. Are they, like, even fans? Because I feel like so much of this, they would know. Or And I just don't know how well, no, J.K. Rowling just, signed off on this, it. to be honest. That's, like, really what comes down to. They would care. That They would care. And yeah, you so know what, that's it. they might know it, but they don't seem to give a fuck about yeah. it, though. So. so it just comes down to, well, we need this. They need mm-hmm. to be in disguise. So I know it takes a month to brew. Whatever, they'll forget about that. Right. And I, you know, the maybe that's true. Maybe it's just maybe it's just us. Is it us? No. <laughs> <laughs> Correct answer. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Mhm. 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 Yeah. Uh, yes. I did not notice that. Interesting. Do you have any examples? Yeah, no, that's fine. If you did, I'd be very impressed, but (laughs) nevertheless. um, Yeah, that's interesting because I really did obviously notice when I started reading Cursed Child, I was like, oh, we're starting with the epilogue of the other. And because of how well 
Cursed Child starts, I thought that that was kind of a clever move mm-hmm. and started to be like, oh, so this is what we're going to, we're going to start right from here. Interesting idea. And, um, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm looking at some of, what's that? Oh, the <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Cause I have notes here and I think that was the next thing on here. Um, <laughs> okay. Tell me what you thought. So, okay. So it, it becomes clear that we have to send a message to mm-hmm. the future. Mm-hmm. Um, FedEx. Well, I did. I was like, oh, it's going to be the mail, mm-hmm. right? Because that's what you do when you, you know, we've all seen that movie. We know that's how it works. Um, and she looked at me and she's like, oh, it's so much worse than that. Yeah. <laughs> she was in the middle of reading it and stops and goes, how are they going to send this message in the mail? And I was just like, <laughs> you wish. <laughs> So yeah, it's this, a, a reaction. This blanket. This this is the sad, sad baby hairy blanket. And um <laughs> I'm gonna start selling those. <laughs> I'm gonna get a table next year. Sad baby hairy blankets. And with uh, a weird burn. <laughs> yeah. And um Albus knows his father is going to want to snuggle with this blanket on um the eve of Halloween and they decide to etch a message with pearl powder yeah dust? because it reacts well there's pearl dust in the potion right and it reacts with what is it anyone mm. well the love potion is what has the pearl dust in it doesn't it and then there's like yeah there's some kind of yeah. it doesn't matter but yeah they write the message mm-hmm. on the blanket and 30 something years later it's still in there because he never washed it I guess, <laughs> and that stuff just doesn't evaporate. I don't know how that's supposed to work, but it. Mm. <laughs> and so then he just lifts it, and it's like burned in the date. I, Help! I love how like hard it is for him to read it too, because um, I feel like the whole book was really hard to read. And I wanted <laughs> them to have a moment where they <laughs> suffered also, <laughs> so, and they're trying to decipher the message. And at that point, when he tells, when he writes that message, do they know that Harry's got a t- another okay. time turner? Okay, here's the thing. This is, throughout Unspoiled, when we did the first books, one of the things that I, I talked about all the time was where are the adults? Because I was grown when I read the stories, right? So I would think about things that maybe a kid wouldn't consider at the time. And I was constantly yelling about Dumbledore and frustrated with Harry because he wasn't going directly to an adult. And so this book, we have adults, you know? We have, like, all these adults. And I'm like, this is good because we have smart, capable grown-ups on the scene. No. Psych. Now I'm like, well, if adults are useless, no wonder. Uh, Mm -hmm. No wonder we didn't have any. Harry, Harry wouldn't have gotten anything done Yeah. if the quality of adults available to him was the quality that he himself turned out to be. Yeah. So I was really disappointed that um, having all of them there. And at one point they say, Harry has a line like, no, our boys are lost in time and we just have to hope they can figure it out. (laughs) What? (laughs) What? (laughs) Mm -mm. Oh, man, I forgot about that one. That's a good one. It just, it was, uh, yeah. So this... Like, just, it's just pure luck, in quotes, because mm-hmm. it's written this, it's not luck, it's contrivance, that <laughs> Draco has this time turner. Mm-hmm. And Draco has kept it despite this conspiracy theory that Scorpius Malfoy oh, is actually right. Voldemort's illegitimate son because they think Draco and his wife could not have a child. And so she used the time turner to go back in time and get pregnant by Voldemort. Okay. Everybody apparently believes this, or at least pretends to believe it in order to make fun of Scorpius, which I, you don't need that. His name is Scorpius. (laughs) Why do we have to add this whole other thing? And so he has been sitting on this time turner like even though the entire argument has been, no, that couldn't have happened. The time turners were destroyed. Why wouldn't he destroy? Don't you think he would destroy that? Because he apparently has never used it before. He's never used it, even though it's. What's that? 
I don't think he has to confirm or deny it. He knows his wife. He trusts his wife. He doesn't have to. It's not like, it's not a question in his mind. It's just the fact that everybody is, like, disbelieving him or making fun of his son. He's protective of his kid. Of, uh, is Draco Malfoy a better father than Harry Potter? Holy shit. No, oh my God. Maybe that's why I like Scorpius so much. He's just got really good parents. <laughs> they did their job. Yes. That was her question. I would like to say that was not my question. <laughs> I did not think that deeply about it, but yes. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so she could just get pregnant by her husband and just be like, oh, it's Voldemort. It's whatever. It's fine. Um, so yeah, Draco having that time turner and not destroying it to me just feels wildly out of character. Like if I had something mm -hmm. and everybody had this conspiracy about me based on this one thing that I don't even plan to use for anything, I am getting rid of it right. so that nobody accidentally finds it and then it's like, ha ha, you see, I knew your wife was a slut for Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> like just a, such yeah, a bizarre subplot. It. That's exactly how they would say it. They're really not cool about sex. In the wizarding world, I think we've gotten that clear from a few different things. Yes. That's a fair point. Okay. So that brings up an interesting question then, because, well, let's say this, I mean, this story has to get out, right? Mm -hmm. Everything that happened, going back in time, trying to save Cedric, because they go to Amos Diggory and are like, what the hell did you do? Because they're blaming him, not realizing that right. Delphi is not related to him and is nothing. And so it's kind of being publicized that, Albus is missing, things are happening. Mm -hmm. So eventually, the public is going to have to find out that Draco had this the whole time, right? I feel Unless like... Unless the Ministry tries to do a big cover-up because they were supposed to destroy them and Hermione kept one, remember? She kept one, too. She didn't keep one. The one that... The one in the, the beginning one of the story? The one they from their library. Yeah, that's where they got it from. But they, she got that from Harry, who confiscated it from Not, I believe it was, yeah. during a raid. But weren't they supposed to destroy it? Did oh, it, you mean that her mind, like once she got it from Harry, she was supposed to immediately destroy yeah, it? Yeah, oh, because she you. gets yelled at for having it. I think for keeping it in a bookcase, <laughs> guarded. That's right. That's exactly what she got. By riddles. <laughs> riddles, Rashawn, <laughs> that 14-year-old boys are able to solve. Uh, oh, my God. I, can't, I don't know about you guys, but at 14, like, the riddles that I would read in stories that kids were able to solve, I always felt so inadequate. Because <laughs> I was just like, oh, I guess that is the end. Like, I would never have gotten that. And they mm. just, there's a couple, right? Mm -hmm. Aren't there, like, three? There's probably three. Oh, mm -mm. I'm sure some Ravenclaw's drawn a diagram somewhere explaining mm -hmm. it. <laughs> Right? But I guess the whole thing is supposed to be that they're solvable and that we can believe that they're solvable by a couple of dopes. Scorpius isn't a dope, but Albus is a dopey guy. He's kind of not. Yes? Sorry, maybe I missed something. Are we really being surprised that, like, the other ends are holding on to them? It's not the ministry, though. It was, like, just the, the stigma of what everybody believed. That was what I thought. He clearly does. He's constantly telling Harry to squash these rumors. Quash. It's quash, not squash. <laughs> well, you know, either. It's fine. Um, yes? Well, that's exactly my point. Yes. If he had it, I thought he would use it. Anybody 
I'm here thinking that you're going, anyone who's married, you're going to want to go back and see your dead spouse. And you're talking about chicken getting taken out of the freezer. I love that. I love that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, extra time to clean. Yeah, I'm all about that. Although if you go back in time, does your house get uncleaned again? I guess it probably does, huh? So you're just in a yep. Sisyphusian. That's terrible. Going back to clean. Yes, sir. That's fair. He has said he hasn't, but yeah, he okay. he he talks to Harry and says, "Do you know how many times I've been tempted mm-hmm. to go back and see my wife because he was so in love with her?" And uh, so. You know, it it has a ring of sincerity to it. I tend to believe him. Yeah, he's shaking his head. I mean, that's fair. You don't have to believe. Oh, ouch. I'm moving on, sir. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah, why wouldn't well, you just use what you already so have? So much of this comes down to it feeling like they just didn't do the research. And it's the research is reading seven awesome books. <laughs> So really, how hard can that be? And you, you're agreeing to write something read by the entire world. So you've got to know that there's a microscope on every decision that you make. So that's the part, as a perfectionist, that I don't understand about mm-hmm. the choices that they made, is that they're apparently just not worried yeah. about it. And I don't understand how you're not thinking the whole time, oh my God, is that right? Oh, they're going to come down on us. Oh my God, they're going to kill us. Nope, that's not what he said. Somebody, okay, we got to fix this right now because I don't want to hear it. Tumblr's going to go nuts. Like, <laughs> and they just don't seem to worry. I guess that's true. And, and it seems like they're trying to have this and Fantastic Beasts be things that people can access without necessarily having read the originals, which... Why wouldn't you, though? I, you know, this is a question for another panel. Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't you, though? Oh. <laughs> Why indeed, Rashawn? Right. Why indeed? Fair enough. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got five yeah. minutes left. Yes. Listen, that could have been a whole other panel. Yeah, um... Okay, so I hated Fantastic Beasts. I won't go into that. We just watched it last week. I know. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, But we did a a podcast, a bonus episode on that. So at this point, it feels to me, and this is kind of a bold statement to make, but I'm going to make it. J.K. Rowling's first seven books took so long and she thought so deeply about them and she was so invested and cared so much and it was so part of a continuing story that it just has a level of continuity and attention to detail that I don't feel is in anything since. Everything that she has released on Pottermore about history of magic in America, for example... <clears throat> a hugely problematic endeavor, not well thought out, not well researched, if researched at all. Fantastic Beasts, weird plot holes, strange decisions made, and a oh, uh, smushing together of two stories that don't make sense in the same movie. Um, and there are just a lot of things that I feel like she made something so amazing with these first seven. And since then, I feel like there is this on-demand sort of need in media because of social media and because of movies and 
the way that movies need to condense a storyline that it doesn't allow her to spread out and do what she does well, which is construct something huge. She's really good at this long con, which is kind of what a lot of her books are. They're mysteries. And she's tricking you, which is what makes them so great. And you fall for it. And so the first, like, four are really heavy into the mystery, and you have no idea that you're falling for every trick she's got. And I think that's part of what the Cursed Child was trying so hard to do. Mm -hmm. They wanted us to believe that Delphi was on their side, but, like, there's no... She's she's nobody. She just pops up out of nowhere and is suddenly very involved. And if you've read these books before, you're you know, red flags are flying all over the place because you're like, well, who the fuck is this? And they don't make the effort to have her be somebody that they trusted from the beginning of the story, somebody who's part of things from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And they have to ramp things up to 11 so that they're, she's, she's flying. Yeah. (laughs) What is that about, by the way? I think that's supposed to be I guess I'm supposed to really believe that, that. yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, right. I want her to be Snape's secret child. I like that better. Yeah. Um. Oh, my God. <laughs> Snape had a secret crush on Bellatrix. Um, so, yeah, I just I think J.K. Rowling made something really special. But just since then, I, I wish that they would let her take some time. Because it feels like things are getting created and produced and popped out so quickly. And there isn't that, like, critical eye being passed over them that there had been, mm. you know? Wow. I feel like that tells you everything you need to know about that. that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What's that? <laughs> Sorry, there's a little mini discussion here. <laughs> but, the, yeah, Fantastic Beasts is a whole other thing. I'm not even going to touch that now. Um, but yeah, so I, I apologize to anybody who like really enjoyed Curse Child, who came in here hoping for some cheerleading. My bad. Um, <laughs> but it was just impossible to get past a lot of this. And I'd love to see it on stage just for the clarification of the perspective of people who say that it's better. Um, but the content of it and the lack of stakes, because we know everything yeah. can just be undone. And the time turners aren't even destroyed at the end of this, are they? So so. if they decide to do this again, they can, which bothers me. (laughs) I don't like that at all. I don't want to do this again. Um, So that, yeah, then kind of like doing this back door that allows them to kind of do whatever the hell they they want. want. Yeah. It's um, what they've already shown us in this that they don't really care about the rules that they've set out. Yeah. So, and the rules are what make it work, mm-hmm. frankly. So, yeah, so that's our, that's our panel. That's our guys. panel. <laughs> Ended on a bit of a downer, but thank you all for coming so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, if anybody wants some Snape was still a dick, though, uh, badge ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again so much to everybody for listening. And toodaloo, motherfuckers. an unspoiled network podcast.